everyone, Leslie Ray here with Altered Pages and today I want to share with you a product um, that has recently come into the store. It is Faber-Castell Gelatos. Well, let me tell you, gelatos are these little sticks of color. Uh, they look very much like a chapstick, if you um, are a partaker of chapsticks. And they are, nothing in the market compares to them. Uh, they're completely acid-free. They're little pigment sticks. They glide on creamy smooth uh, with lots of vibrant colors. You can leave them as is, or you can blend them out with water. Um, and they are good to use on any number of surfaces. Um, the set I'm using is called the 50s Diner Set. And it is, it has four of these wonderful little gelatos. The ones that come in the 50s Diner Set are the Blood Orange, the Squid Ink, the Aqua Dolce, and the Banana. The banana is very, very pretty yellow. And then what also comes with this set is this little dauber, which has a nice little sponge on the end of it, and a neat little uh, kind of stipple brush. So this is everything you get um, that helps for you know creating all your fun stuff. Um, so let's get started playing with these. Um, what I want to share with you is some just very basic techniques. Uh, when I first started this, playing with these and getting to know them, uh, it became very apparent very quick that this was going to be done over a course of videos, not just one. Uh, what I've done here is I've gotten a couple of different um, surfaces to use. I have some black cardstock. I have some... Um, watercolor paper, some white cardstock, some craft cardstock, and then also this is coordination's cardstock that has already been pre-embossed. So I want to show you a couple of techniques with these. Um, I also want to use some embossing powder and some stamps. The stamps I'm using are these fun Echo Green stamps. They're um, a pre-cut, pre-backed acrylic um, Echo Green. We carry some of these in the store. These are lots of fun. I'm going to use a watercolor blush. And then I also want to share with you uh, some stuff that you can do on twill or fabric. Because you can use these on fabric, you can use these on all kinds of stuff. So let's get started. And for the first things I want to do is to show you some stuff that will do with dry. And I'm going to show you on watercolor and on white and then also on craft and on black and when I first started playing with these I thought you only could get a good texture on the craft I mean on the black if it was your um, your oh like your metallic ones and that's not the case at all. So let me show you and let me zoom in real quick to show you. There we go. That's what I needed. So that you can see this up close and personal. Okay. Alrighty. Uh, let's start with white. And what I'm going to use to blend, you could use the blending tool that they give you. Um, or you can use a makeup sponge. I'm going to use the makeup sponge just to kind of conserve some things. Um, the colors in this set, let's start with yellow. If you look at it, 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 it rolls up just like a lipstick. Okay. And it already comes with lots of color in it. And so... All you do is just go straight on your paper and you see how creamy and smooth this is not um, not a harsh crayon you you really don't see the texture of the mark unless you just really look for it and what's neat about these is you can blend it with your finger 
if you wanted to. You can get a sponge and blend it as well and just blend it across the paper. Obviously the smoother the paper, the easier it blends. If you have a paper with more texture, like we'll see in a minute, with the um, with the black where it has kind of a linen texture to it, it's not going to smooth as easy. If you have two colors, let's go with this blood orange. Um, blood orange is almost red. You can smooth them together to blend colors. And make some really nice vibrant colors. Um, these colors do good to make like a sunset color. So you can have a lot of fun blending your textures together and creating other colors. So like if you wanted to go on down and blend into some of the red or the blood orange. Let me add a little more of that right there. And get the Dolce Aqua in there. Bring these down together. Get them all nice and blended. And kind of get a pale purpley color going on. These will be great for doing art journaling and all that kind of stuff because once you get this all on here and blended, it's very, it, it still feels like paper. It doesn't have leave a greasy film or anything. So it'll take your pens and your inks and all that very easily. And then finally the squid ink. And this one is just kind of a neat gray. And Take those two together and then start blending them together. You can make some really neat, ominous looking clouds if you wanted to. Some neat um, water scenes for the ocean. It'd be great to look like metal. Lots of great fun techniques. Just blending them dry like that. So. You can see how easily they smoosh together. This one leaves kind of a an edge, so what I would do is come back over with the lighter color just a little bit and smooth it some more. And you'll see that edge blend on in. It'd be very nice for some dramatic clouds and stuff. So just blending on plain cardstock. Now, this is a plain smooth cardstock. There's no texture to it whatsoever. If we try that with something with a little bit of texture, for instance, this lovely watercolor paper, then these start taking on a little bit different texture when they go on. You see they have kind of more of a mottled look where when it glides over the surface of the paper, it leaves the divots in the watercolor paper open. On. But they're so creamy, sometimes they'll even go down in there. And then, and you think I'm using a whole lot, but really, I'm not hardly using it at all. It goes a long way. Just smear this on here. And these create such great backgrounds. And, um, you know, being in the seven or the fifties tones, these are awesome. There's another one we carry in the store called Tropical, and I love those too with the pinks, and the turquoise, and stuff, lime. They're just really super fun. So earlier I was creating, and I kind of got a green color um, with the banana and the. Dolce Aqua, which is kind of neat for using with flowers and, and other kinds of butterflies and stamps and stuff. Which I'll show you some watercolor techniques using those in just a minute. 
but just blending these in by themselves like this makes some really neat backgrounds. Um, I wanted to do this on my ATC backgrounds so that I can keep these and use them for some really cool background techniques. And make some neat little cards out of these later. And I'll already have my backgrounds finished. If you want to add in some more color, just go in right over the top of it. Works perfect. And then you can blend that in how you want it. And it was like it was there all along. So, kind of a neat idea to go along and make some cool backgrounds like that. how easily the sponge, I mean it's just a little sponge, a little makeup sponge, I buy like a hundred of them for a dollar at the dollar store, so nothing special, and create some cool backgrounds to use later for interesting little ATCs, and again, not greasy to the feel once they go on, I would have thought they would have had a greasy texture, but they don't. I just love those. Now, this is what's fun. Let's do it on some of our craft cardstock. Y'all know I'm a big fan of craft. Craft and I are, we go way back. I had to have a craft intervention at one point in my crafty career because I could not make a card without craft on it. Craft in, in excess can be kind of overwhelming. A little bit of craft is a good thing. A whole lot of craft can get you in trouble. So, I, I'm still part of the craft recovery program, but you know, I had to share this with you. It was just what I had to do. So, of course, we're back to with the craft, a yummy, smooth surface. So, this just really glides along. And I love how that does. And just does really good at pulling the color across the surface and getting a nice coverage. If you like to play with um, like crepas or other oil based colors, you get a similar feel to how they work, but at the same time, you don't have that greasy factor. It's very, um, very smooth, very light, and very soluble. They, they blend so well. Whereas you wouldn't even dream of putting water with your crepons. That just, that just wouldn't be something you would want to attempt. And you can just build layers, which is the best part of mixed media anyway, is getting to build some layers. And so, totally different look than you would get on a piece of watercolor paper versus a piece of craft paper versus a piece of white. Now, play with these same colors on a piece of black. You're ready for them to just kind of melt into the background? Well, that doesn't happen at all. They're very vibrant, even on black. And in fact, the lighter the color, the more your, your color comes out. And I'll put just a little bit of squid ink on this one. Not a whole lot. And I'll show it to you before I go blending it around. You could leave it like that. It's very bold, very striking, but it's way more fun when you blend. Here we are. Ready? And the lighter color when you blend kind of goes down into the into its the 
crevices. But this, you're going to want to keep some of that bright color showing. And so you're going to want to go back with color on top and you get this initial blending bin and add back in some of the starkness of that blue and that yellow. You can just kind of blend some of it right there. Start getting those greens in there. Which I love. How easily they blend with your fingers. Add right here, kind of get some of that orange going. So, these are a lot of fun to go back in and play with on the black surface and see how it's neat the way the texture kind of picks up. When you've blended it, it goes down into the texture like in here, but then when you swipe across it again, you bring out the, sh the, um, the, you bring out the texture. Very similar effect if you were doing this on canvas boards and stuff. Okay, very fun. Love this. Now, check this out. This is a piece of Coordination's cardstock. And Coordination's cardstock, you can buy it either already embossed. This is case is already embossed like this. This is some of the cardstock that goes with Graphic 45. Um, or you can emboss it. But in either case, when you get it like this, you want to sand. And not just sand the edges, but sand the embossed part. Because that helps that embossing come out even more. Okay, so here we go. Sanding, sanding, sanding. Okay, so I sand, wipe, and let's go over it with a little bit of this lighter blue. And maybe this big one. I'll do with the gray. And I just lightly went over that. And right now, I haven't even blended anything. Okay? But if I come back in and blend just a little bit, and come up here and kind of Now it's taken on kind of an, a nice antique -y look. This is blue versus the color of the core. This one shows the color of the core of the cardstock. This is the same thing with the gelatos. So isn't that neat? And that's just using these dry. Just dry. So what happens when you start getting them wet? Well, they work like ink. They're lots of fun. One of the things that's great to do with them is you can take a stamp like this one, very pretty stamp. And let's say we want a red and yellow. Butterfly. Let me get the, get the wings in the body here. Okay. I'm gonna get his outskirts of his little wings here. While we're doing this. And then come back in with the yellow. I love how vibrant banana is. It's just so pretty. Okay, now we've got a little bit of color on there. You can mist it. I'm gonna just damp it like this with a wet brush. Damp this side. This lets it also blend on here just a little bit. I see already I want to add a little more red here and here. So I'm going to go ahead and do that. And then I can stamp him. Watch this, guys. It looks like he's been watercolored. Isn't that cool? 
Let me hit that with the heat gun before I bring it up to you. So, and that was blended just straight on the stamp. Love that technique. Now, let me wipe them off. Show you some other fun techniques to do with stamps. Okay. Let me get the rest of him off. Or at least most of it. I still have a little bit in his bits of his wings, but he will be fine. And the reason I do any cleaning to him, because most of you know I'm usually the antithesis of cleaning the stamp, um, is because I want to do some embossing and I want my embossing to go on pretty clear without any interruption. So I want to emboss on this watercolor paper. One of the things I want to emboss is this this one that looks like stickweed. I'll show you a fun technique with him. I'll do a little more right here and then I'm further down. So I'm just using an ultra fine emboss enamel and the back of a sheet of paper here. And then I want to do the second one with my butterfly. And I want it to kind of fall off the edge like that. And then powder on there. And I'll heat set both of these. Now, you can go at this one of two ways. With the butterfly, I'm going to show you the approach where you have like a little palette that you work off of and then you wash across. With this one, I'm going to show you wetting our surface first. Get the red out of there. Okay, I'm going to wet the surface. Just Plain water going on, and then I'm going to take my my uh, let's make a sunrise or a sunset. I'm going to take my yellow and kind of go at it here and start spreading it around. And as it comes closer to the surface down here, kind of gets orangey. And more red. More yellow. Just a little bit of blue at the top.
and then take and it can dry a little bit and then hit it again with the heat tool. And have a very subtle color exchange going down. And that was using it wet. Now, I went directly to this to the paper on this, wet my paper, went directly to the paper with the crayon. Look how beautifully it blends so smoothly. You can do that, or I like to use a piece of acrylic. This is out of a packaging. And use this like a palette itself. Um, you can use these very much like watercolor crayons or you can you know make little watercolor spots like we're doing here by sticking them on there. Now this offers a way more subtle look. I'll show you what I mean here. First I want to go in and color the, the butterfly very similar to what we colored her earlier. A little bit of red on the outside, a little bit of yellow on the inside. And so I take this and go over her like this. And actually I've got a lot of color on there. Um, and I put in a, a large amount of color on there to get her to even have this much vibrant color that you can see. Earlier when I was playing with these, um, I put a little color on and you added your water and you could barely see. It was very subtle. There we go. Add in some yellow back into the butterfly. And then the final step, I'm going to use this blue. I see here's where the subtlety becomes so clear. The blue, the Dolce Aqua, is so very light. And sometimes what you might want to do is come back over the edge like that and then bring that up because it is that light. Now let me blend this a little more and you can see just how light it is even after adding that color back in. You can see how light it is there on the end. So, you know, pick and choose on these how you want to go. These are great to use in your art journals. It's great to use on your canvases. I like all of the watercolory techniques you can get. I like all the blending you can do. There's some really neat colors, um, a wide range of colors. We carry several in the store. You can buy them by color families, or you can buy them in these neat families where they're mixed up. Um, I kind of like the mixed up because I was able to get several colors that work together, but also um, give me a nice range of colors. So if you're gonna if you're gonna just make one purchase, I would suggest getting either the 1950s diner or getting the tropical set because. You get four colors that work together. Now, some things you can do with the tools that come with it. This is the little stipple brush that I was talking about. You can do any number of things. You can work with it dry first. Let me dry it here. Now, I didn't go into all the yellow, so let me get a stencil and show you working with that dry. 
Um, let me just work on a regular piece of cardstock. I didn't go into all the color here, so these two still have some dry on them. So I want to put this down here and use this brush just like you would use a stipple brush and go at your piece in here. And you can see I've picked up some color. And you just sit all away like this. And I'm pouncing. And so it makes a very, a very subtle coloring like this. Neat, huh? Let's do a red one. Just for fun. There we go. And then when you want to change colors, I like to have either a paper towel or something nearby. And even though there's still a little color showing on my brush right here, when I simple down, there's no color really showing. So I'm going to do this with the red, get a little red in my brush like that. And again, the red has a little more oomph to it. And I'm just using one of the stencils we have in the store. This is one of the um, one of the new stencils from Crafters Companion. No, Crafters Workshop. Sorry, wrong company. I apologize. There we go. And so, just adding with the stipple brush. One of the ways to do that. And it's almost a dry brush kind of technique. It's very fun, very easy to use. Now, if you dip this little puppy in the water, well then you can do all kinds of fun stuff. You can do some um, fun um, spattering and that kind of thing. So, works well for that. Whatever I do when I'm done, I make sure I get him all nice and clean, get all the color out of him, and let him dry. And I let him dry upright so that his bristles stay kind of up like that. The red stains it a little. Now the other tool you you get is this fun little dauber tool. Neat things to do with the dauber include you can get your color on there. And then you can make perfect little circles. Just okay, that's one thing you can do. Fun little tool. But you can also use it in a similar way with your stencils as a blending tool, blending in colors, and instead of using a sponge like this you can choose to use this. And this comes with your set as well. Isn't that fun? And then just make sure again I dip it in the water, get most of the color out of it, get it good and dry. Again the red stains a little bit and let it sit over there and dry. Now one last thing before I leave you that I wanted to show you and share with you is one other thing you can do with your gelatos and that is color canvas or other fabrics. This is a piece of twill. Let me cut this off real quick. I usually buy my twill and other fabrics in a um, in white or in beige so that I can come back in and color them. And because it's so much more fun to do it that way. Well, let's say we want to have a little bit of yellow. These colors straight on without even blinking. Um, and a little bit of, of this Dolce. Make it kind of green. We can use our blending tool. 
blend them together. And get kind of a fun lime going. There we go. Or, so see this was just drying it on. And it made this great kind of lime color. Or you could go with same two colors, because I want you to see it. Same two colors, but wet. Still drawing it on dry. But, I'm going to come at it with my brush and blend. You see how creamy? You can almost see the paint sitting on top of this piece of twill while I work it and I want to add more of the aqua in. It just makes a nice creamy paint. That's because I'm using a non-soluble surface underneath it is why it's staying on top and letting me blend it good. If I had done this on paper or cardstock, the water would have seeped on through and not allowed me to to have that much mixing time. And so my colors would have been way more blotched. But that's okay too. So and we can just heat that up. I don't want to keep that on my wall. Keep that here. It has a little more drying to do, but the um, handling is a little easier. And so here's the difference. Blending it dry or blending it wet. And this will stay. You can color your, your twill ribbons or your canvases or whatever, any color you want with your gelatos. Isn't that fun? So there's a couple of different things to do with the dry blending and the different textures and backgrounds and using it with embossing and watercolor or stippling it and dry brushing it using it with heat embossing using it directly on your stamp any number of things you can do I still think this is my favorite or maybe this one or maybe this one Ooh, or that one so enjoy I hope that helps you get a little bit of an introduction to your gelatos, um, play with them. That's my favorite thing to tell anybody with any new medium. Play with it. Learn what it does. See what all you can make it do. And then apply it to your art. So I know several of these techniques I'll be doing with my, my own journals, and I'll make note of them for you and make sure you know, well, remember how this was done? That's how we did that. So I hope this helps. Thank you for staying with me. and. Remember, all of these products can be purchased through alteredpages